Greetings everyone, this is Luandile here, the leader and the instructor of Maneko School. Today we're actually going to be doing exercise 2.11. As you guys can see, I've already created my class called it, and I've called it uh, exercise 2.11c. It simply says that it's from students' perspective. And I've also put this link on top of my main method so that you guys will be able to get your own copy of this textbook we're actually going through. Here is it, it here is the cover. So right now we want to do exercise 2.11. And if you haven't read the question, you can go through it. We are actually required to rewrite exercise 1.11 to prompt the user to enter the number of years and displace the population after the number of years. So we got to use the hint in programming exercise 1.1 for this program. The population should be cast into an integer. So here is a sample run. They gave us the sample run. And if you haven't checked out my video on exercise 1.11 i strongly suggest you do however i am gonna go take a look at it it's actually on page exercise 1.11 it's actually on page 54 as you guys say okay so the u.s cancer bureau projects population based on the following assumptions one birth in every seven seconds one dead in every 13 seconds one new immigrant in every 45 seconds so we gotta write a program to display the population for each of the next five years we assume the okay assume the current population is that number and one year has the 365 days so the hint here is in Java, if two integers perform division, the result, and the result is an integer. The fractional part is truncated. For example, 5 over 4 is 1, not 1.25, and 10 over 4 is 2, not 2.5. To get an accurate result with the fractional part, one of the values involved in the division must be a number with a decimal point. For example, 5.0 over 4 is actually 1.5 and 10 over 4.0 is actually 2.5. So now let's get back to our question. I am going I am not going to read it again though because I did a moment ago. But I'm gonna let you guys let you guys have a look at it. Now that you're done looking at it, we will simply go to our IDE and then we're gonna get our hands dirty with the solution. So I asked people to actually comment on my previous tutorial on this exercise, and if they didn't it's totally understandable it's okay it's not like you have to it's up to you it's your choice but i always strongly suggest that you do what i ask you to do because that way you are gonna improve you are gonna see like what's the point of this of this channel here and if you're not gonna and if you decide not to give uh, not to attempt these solutions by yourself not to engage on this channel not to if you decide not to engage yourself on this channel i mean you probably maximizing your chances of being less uh you actually maximizing your chances of improving out of this channel here so that's why i always strongly suggest you put comments you like it you like you like my video or dislike them it's totally up to you okay with that being said now let's jump on to our solution we'll simply go final simply go final int 
one seconds in an hour and if you if you remember well so how many seconds are there in, uh, in an hour we have 30 minutes i mean we've got 60 minutes in an hour and we've got 60 seconds in a minute so it's basically 60 times 60 which is 3600 right okay so as i was saying on our previous tutorial what we did is we had uh, a bunch of constant i mean not a bunch but two if if not three of them on top of our main method the reason being like it's optional you can put your main method i mean your constant on top of your main method because you you also be access they will also be accessible on your main method However, usually you do that if you've got more than one method which actually use those constant. But I don't want to go deeper into methods. I just thought you guys got to know, like, why would you even put those constant outside the main method? However, this is the most convincing solution out of the ones you have on exercise. 2.11 so what other constant do we need no in fact i've gotta go seconds in a day we'll see that will simply be 24 multiplied by it. seconds in an hour is supposed to be seconds in an hour okay what else we want to know how many seconds in fact we do know how many seconds we can find how many seconds are there seconds in a year that will be simply 365 multiplied by number of seconds in a day okay once we get that it's time we actually declare our init and initialize our initial population size population initial population size which is let me simply copy and paste that number oh actually it's not here so what I will simply do is because I had it I had it somewhere let me check it on these papers I have here okay it's actually three one two zero 32486 oh damn i was actually looking away no wonder i was punching these numbers and yet nothing came out okay it was actually 31 it's actually 31203248 okay now that we've got these constants what we want to do what we want to do is to get started with actually displaying something on screen so system.out.print system.out.print we'll simply go and uh, enter number of years enter number of years okay we then go there's something i want to do i mean something there might freak you guys out 
I don't know though. But let's try it. Oh, this is what I would do. I will simply declare a variable that will hold number of number of years. Instead of creating a scanner and then closing it, what I will simply do, I will go number of years. I will did it. I will do it differently this time around. I will just go new scanner system dot in you see this whole thing it's actually creating a scanner and usually we've been putting this whole thing we've been assigning this whole thing to some variable call it input for instance so what we want to do now is to actually invoke the next int method on this thing here so we basically won't be having a variable that is there in order to deal with the scanner we'll simply involve uh we'll simply create a scanner you would say perhaps an anonymous scanner and then use the next int method and if you're not quite clear you can put the question down below in the comments how does this thing work but it does work i can assure you of that however in, in such a situation you cannot you cannot uh close your scanner because in order to do that you would need a variable to hold your scanner okay what else we want to do we simply want to calculate now we gotta calculate the number of seconds in an hour in fact we don't what we can do is we can simply let's do it differently this time around we can simply have a variable call it final po population size we make it we initialize it to this size over here we initialize we initialize it to the initial population we then go final final population size on that we've got to add Oh, before I do that, you see, you guys, in programming, you happen to think of one thing, and then next thing you know, you know that in order to do that, there's something else that is required to be done first. Okay? And right now, I'm actually thinking of calculating the number of years, I mean, the number of seconds on the given number of years okay let me just go so total number or oh, i can just go total seconds i can simply go that is actually equal to number of years multiplied by number of seconds in a year multiplied by seconds in a year so this variable here will actually hold the total number of seconds on the given number of years right so if we, if we are given 10 years this will contain the total number of 10 the total number of seconds in 10 in 10 years yeah Okay, so what else we want to do? So what we want to do now is to simply go final, is to modify our final population size. We do know that every seven seconds, so 
You do know that every seven seconds, what's going to happen? PPO going to be born, okay? So what we can do is to simply say total seconds divided by the number seven because we want to see how many times does seven go into total seconds. We simply do this, we then, we then go final population size is equals to total seconds divided by 45 because every 45 seconds people they get into the country right so final population size minus total seconds divided by the t now why did we use the minus why did you subtract and not add it's simply because people will be dying every 13 seconds i, d I don't necessarily have to put comments but for your sake you guys i can just go add no born all at all no born people slash kids or whatever into the current population size Then you go at all immigrants supposed to double M at all immigrant into the current population size. And then lastly you've got to remove all people who died who died in the given period okay now that we've got that what you then do is we simply go we simply go oh before I uh, display my results uh, there's something I want to talk about. You see, what we used to do, in fact, what we did is on student A and B solution, what we did is we said system dot out dot print system dot out dot print the population or our output looks something like looked something like this the population in number of years is yes is However, there's something I want you guys to think about. Let's try to display. Okay, let's put a five. Look, we still get what we expected, right? But there's a little bit of a problem with this solution, and that's why 
I asked you guys to put a comment on the previous video, which was actually exercise 2.11b. From yeah, I mean, it, which was exercise 2.11 from student B's perspective. There's a little bit of an issue on this statement. You see, when it comes to programming, you gotta be able to think of all possible cases. And there are, and there are certain cases that happened not to think about. So the question is, what if a user decides to put the one? Let's do it and see what happens. So now, our output is the population the popu the population is the population in one year is that number here right however like there's not you see one year doesn't it does make sense but it doesn't sound okay right it's supposed to be the population in one year is so the question how are we going how are we going to go about doing that that's pretty straightforward actually so we're going to go the population in mm, in this so now we've got to determine whether to use a yes or a year we're simply going to do that by simply doing this This is what we'll do. We'll simply ask ourselves whether this number is a one. And if the answer is yes, do that. We'll simply put a year, a word year, as opposed to yes. And if our answer is not one will simply put yes right and then we put the word is or perhaps let's just remove this whole thing let's do it this way yeah so now let's read it through again. Number of years. This whole thing is supposed to be inside the brackets. So the population in some number. year or years is whatever our, po our final population is so let's try it out and see what we get again if you put a number like five it will work out obviously but if we put a one the population in one year will be that you see we no longer have an s on the word year as we used to so that should be it for this tutorial you guys but however I mean however there's something else we never thought about like ask yourself what would happen if someone give us a number like in any negative number for instance what if someone give us minus 50 how our program is going to go about doing that. I'm not going to try it out myself. I'm not even going to run a program. But you should ask yourself that question and, and then try to give me an answer down below on the comment. Okay. That's pretty much it, you guys. And, in, and if you haven't yet subscribed on my channel, I would really appreciate it you do because look at this I'm leaving this link this way simply because as of the time of recording this video I'm not yet qualified to do certain things and I would need at least 1000 people 
in order for me subscribers i mean in order for me to be eligible to some youtube features so that's pretty much it you guys and in, if you haven't and uh, if you think you can and if you like this video i would really appreciate it you share it to your friends or whoever who's interested in java and what i strongly suggest you do is just when it comes to youtube if you're looking for my channel just go money quest go right on top of on the search bar just go money quest go and my video will pop out will pop up as opposed to going java programming or introduction to java so that's pretty much it you guys see you on the next tutorial which is exercise 2.12 cheers i'm gone